Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our special service this morning to celebrate Aboriginal Sunday. And we acknowledge that we are on unceded Algonquin territory in this beautiful land. Here I am in Pontiac County, Quebec, and I have behind me as well the uh, colors of the medicine wheel which we uh, honor the all nations of the earth, the four directions, and the four elements of the earth. And well, as well, we acknowledge the important rituals and medicines that these colors each represent. Nearby where I am standing, there is the Lille au Allumette, as well as the Lille du Grand Calumet, home of the Great water, white water rafting, world renowned, and also originally home to the uh, Kitchisepurini, the peoples of the Great River. We have a few special guests to welcome to our service of worship this morning. Our musician is a special musician is Bev McIver, who is a musician at Knox Edwards United Church in Edwards. She lives in Carlsbad Springs, but she is a member of the Lac Sul First Nation, which is located in northwestern Ontario. Mitchell Wright, the music director from Mackay United, is providing the accompaniment for our hymns this morning. <clears throat> so I hope you will all find that space in your home, and within your hearts as you open yourselves to this time of worship.
Good morning. Our call to worship today will be free form, and it fits into the overall theme of our service, which as it unfolds, you will understand, calls us to uh, allow the Spirit of God and the coming of Christ to break down all of the barriers that hold us back from being uh, people, people of God, from being church, from mending and healing the world. Your response today, free form, is be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. Say it with me. Be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. Be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. You got it? All right. So we're going to, um, we're going to start our call to worship. It'll be threefold, and then we'll pray, and off we go. In this place, God calls us to be. Be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. From this place, Jesus teaches us how to be. Be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. And as the Holy Spirit will send us from this place. Be with us, God, as we desire to be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, most certainly as you come to us as Father in creation and Mother in wisdom, we invite you into the midst of that which is our lives. And so, gracious God, indeed be with us as we so desire to be with you. Send us, Jesus, to be with us as we so desire to follow him. Fill us, gracious God, with the Holy Spirit as we so desire to live by the Spirit, being good vessels of your wisdom and your love for your creation. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
please join me in our prayer for illumination this morning. In your name and by the power of your Holy Spirit, dear God, please help us to hear this word of Scripture newly and to live more and more fully into the vision that they cast. And now I share with you a reading from Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, which tells us there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. My friends, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for inviting me to share the message for Aboriginal Sunday. I'd like to begin by sharing some information about my heritage. My grandmother was born on what used to be Cognawaga Reserve. It's now Ganasataki. It's located on the border of Quebec, Ontario, and northern New York State. We are Mohawk heritage. My grandmother grew up on the reserve. Her brothers, Mike and Frank, fought in the Second World War for Canada, but in doing so, they no longer fit the residency requirements, and they lost their status and their homes on the reserve. My grandmother, who was Roman Catholic, met my grandfather, who was Irish and Protestant. She lost her status and got kicked off the reserve when she took up with my grandfather. Because it was a mixed relationship, they could not find a church that would marry them. That actually took several years before a law clerk at the courthouse in Perth would do so. After my grandfather died, my grandmother raised my mom, Lillian, and her sister, Rose, in Smith Falls. They had a baby brother who died as an infant. I was raised in Perth. We were very poor money-wise, but I had a happy childhood. My mother tried to raise us as white, and for the most part, it worked. The exception was my brother Bill, who was several shades darker than I am. He had waist-length, straight, black hair, and was immediately identifiable as Indigenous. This did not go well for him, as some of the worst memories of my childhood we're hearing boys from school yelling, let's put the boots to the Indian, and the thuds and the beatings that would continue as I ran home to get my mom to make them stop. I grew up without a huge amount of time spent with my extended family, I, although I did spend a lot of time with my grandmother. I thought she was the most superstitious person I had ever met with her telling me what to plant in her garden, what plants were friends, and which ones would not grow well if they were put side by side. She had rules for everything from when to plant the garden to when my twins didn't want to sleep at night, but slept all day and be up all night. She said it was because they were mixed up in the womb, as one was breech and the other was transverse. She told me to somersault them, and in my sleepless desperation, I did so, and I got the first good night of sleep since they were born. As I grew older, I learned that what I thought were superstitions were really her teachings. I wish I had been able to spend time on the reserve and get to know my great aunts and other family. I used to see my cousin, though, when he visited the small towns in eastern Ontario 
to paint their water towers. Mohawks are known for their ability to be comfortable at great heights, and so they help build many of the skyscrapers in New York City. When my grandmother died, I was shocked at the number of people in their beautiful regalia who showed up for her funeral, including a chief in his floor-length bonnet of eagle feathers. I felt I had been robbed of my heritage. Paul, in his letter to the churches in southern Galatia, Galatians 3, verse 28, says, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This wonderful proclamation of inclusivity needs to be heard. This statement rings true for us here today. In these times of racial awareness and acknowledgement of discrimination, it is time for us to focus on our common humanity and look for ways that we can love our neighbors instead of fearing them or talking about us and them. We need to honor the deaths of Regis Korninski, Paquette, and George Floyd. As someone who has handled racism, yes, even from church people, it is our responsibility to teach our children and grandchildren and our Sunday school children that we are all one, united in love and faithfulness as followers of the teachings of Christ. Very likely one of the phrases the people at Queenswood have heard me say the most is that we are all God's beloved children. Each and every one of us matter. Aboriginal people have a saying, all my relations. What this says to me is that we are all united. It goes further than Paul's teaching and evangelism. Paul was speaking about people. All my relations includes all living things. People, creatures in the water, those that fly in the air, and everything that creeps and crawls and slithers on the ground. We all have a place in God's great creation. I was taught that creation is like a giant spider's web. If you pluck at one thread, the vibrations are felt throughout the whole web. It's like the ripples that spread out when a pebble is thrown or skipped in water. I believe that this pandemic has shown the truth of this. As people have been forced to stay put, pollution is not as widespread. Places that have not seen clear skies in decades can now see to the mountains on the horizon. Native species are returning to cleaner habitats. I can't imagine fish in the canals of Venice or mountain goats in the streets of a village in Wales. Even though the humpback quail in the St. Lawrence Valley came to a sad demise, I am astounded that it ended up there in the first place. So today, on Aboriginal Sunday, let us give thanks for the contributions of our First Nations people. Let us all, individually and collectively, seek out ways to work for reconciliation and justice. Let us be the beloved children of God and love our neighbors, yes, all of them, no matter how challenging that can be. Like the old Sunday school hymn says, Jesus loves the little children, all the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen.
we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Father, let me be your servant. Let me I'm Reverend Evan Smith. I am the United Church Minister at Toronto Urban Native Ministry, which is an outreach ministry of the United and Anglican Churches that's been around for 21 years. My name is Jess Wants, and I am a student at Emmanuel College. My degree uh, that I'm studying is my Master of Divinity with the intention of going for ordination. Being in outreach ministry, we have a whole sort of wide range of things that we do. My work involves a lot of street outreach, harm reduction work, uh, pastoral care, counseling, visiting uh, prisons, uh, doing a lot of advocacy for parishioners and clients and community referrals and crisis counseling, funerals, weddings. We have a program called Bidobin, uh, which is an indigenous community ministry. Uh, and so we do things like an Indigenous book club. Each December we do a big feast for youth in the community, honoring two spirit folks. Uh, and I think this year we had almost 80 people at it. And we have an elder come in and do traditional teachings and teach the youth how to actually make the food that we're going to eat. I think the community would look really different if Toronto Urban Native Ministry wasn't here because we're one of the only ministries uh, definitely in Toronto uh, uh, that really looks at focusing on uh, traditional spirituality and Christian spiritual traditions together. Um, not one as being better than the other or sort of overshadowing. Um, and I think that there's so many people who come into Toronto and who are looking for a spiritual home and don't know how to access um, either Christian communities because they're not culturally relevant or uh, traditional spiritual teachings um, because they were raised in the church or they just don't have access uh, to them. So it's a really important role that we play in connecting people with their, their spiritualities, no matter what they look like. Your gifts to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada help make projects like this possible. Thank you, and please continue to give. I ask you all to take a moment and center yourself. Snuggle up to your loved ones as we come to get closer to God. O oh, great creator, we pause in our worship story to offer our prayers of sorrow and hope to you this day. We rejoice in the miracle of your creation that is all around us, the heady wonders of summer sights and sounds and smells. How blessed we are to be in your world. We thrill at the diminishing COVID cases in our nation and revel in the simple pleasures of seeing a grandchild, going to a nursery, getting our hair cut. Yet, Holy One, even as we celebrate, our hearts cry out for our world where it is fractured and broken. Hear the anguish of those who have been killed brutalized or demeaned because of the color of their skin. Surely we are all God's beloved children who should always be treated with love and respect. Right here, however, in our wonderful country, we cannot ignore the anguish of our First Nations people who continue to wrestle with the devastating impact of colonialism 
from the residential schools to the 60s scoop that robbed them of their family life, their language, their culture. However, wise advocate, with your love and guidance, the elders of our community of Christ acknowledged and apologized and took first hesitant steps to alleviate some of the trauma of those transgressions. As Paul said in Galatians, O Holy One, we come before you this day to bear witness that we are all one, all unified as children of God. Great Creator, we thank the First Nations people who have shared so much with us, their knowledge of the land and the environment, their storytelling, their art, their music, their beadwork artistry, their rich literature, and their spirituality, and so we sing their praises. Still today, we should bring a contrite heart and a burning desire to seek forgiveness for our old ways. O oh, Great Spirit, we ask your help that we may see that very small acts of compassion can stir change in many ways. I ask, could not one of the greatest acts of compassion be a sincere apology? Great courage is needed to accept responsibility for our transgressions against others. So we pray for your guidance to truly see ourselves, to see that small behaviors, like a word or an action, can cause great pain to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Acknowledgement of these hurts is a critical first step on our journey towards you, Holy One. But silence is not an option for us. We must speak and act now. Help us, God, to find the strength to listen to that small, still voice within our soul, urging us to break the tangled webs of our old attitudes that stifle our spirit and close our heart to your message that we are beloved of God. We pray you will open our hearts to new relationships and lead us to acceptance of your grace, where your immense love will nudge us forward on our journey as faithful servants of Christ. Okay. Let us all now pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
friends, surround yourself in the spirit. God is with you. Surround yourself in the light. God is with you. Surround yourself in the wisdom. God is with you. Surround yourself in the love. God is with you. Be brave, be strong, be humble. And as we move from this time together into the world, may we live as a reconciled and reconciling people with assurance that Creator God, Great Spirit, accompanies us this day and every day. Amen. In the quiet, misty morning, when the moon has gone to bed, when the sparrows stop their singing, and the sky is clear and red, when the summer ceased its gleaming, when the corn is past its prime, when adventures lost its meaning, I'll be homeward bound in time. Mind me not to the pasture, chain me not to the plow, set me free. We are aware as Christians for the need that we have to continually confront and address issues of racial justice in our midst, and that includes within our churches. We would invite you to stay tuned to watch a video produced by the Black Clergy Network of the United Church of Canada and take some time to consider how it is that you might increase your awareness and your action in terms of ensuring there is racial justice for all, even within our churches. How am I doing? Who cares? 
il serait peut-être mieux de vous retourner la question. How can you help? How can you help dismantle the sin of racism? How have you been complacent? Privileged. How do we as a church do the mission of God's work in the world? To love one another as God has loved us. Sans considération de race ou de culture. Isn't race a fake construct anyway? My blackness centers whiteness. It others me. It forces us to live within a system of opposition. And I reject that. Yet since we persist in this system of lies, of white supremacy. Racism. Black lives matter. Trop longtemps, le corps du noir a été considéré comme quelque chose inférieur à la condition humaine. À peine une commodité. The deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and the threat to Christian Cooper's life confirm this disheartening truth. It is facile to point a finger to events far away from home. Yet racism exists in Canada and it is not recent. Viola Desmond lamented this. The family of Andrew Loku, Regis Korczynski Parquet lament this. Black lives live and lament this reality every single day. I didn't even know that I was black until I came to this country, Canada. A country I thought was welcoming, a country of acceptance. It doesn't matter, I was born here. And people are always trying to locate me somewhere else. Where are you from? Where are your parents from? from away. Bien que nous soyons tous appelés à baptiser au nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit, we fail to truly live into our baptism. To repent in order to change our ways. Nothing has changed. How am I doing? Comment ça va? I am numb. I am traumatized. I can barely find the words to say. I'm tired. I'm tired. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I need you to do something. Say something. Votre silence est assourdissant. I'm angry. I'm courageous enough to feel this, this rage. Your moments of kindness are not enough. We need to center ourselves on something more than whiteness. Because I love God with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my soul, with all my mind. And I love this diverse, body of people filled with the Holy Spirit, who we call the church, but I can't breathe. Mais je n'arrive pas à respirer. This anger, this anger's foundation is deep-seated pain. that is taking its toll emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And still, I serve because I am called. 
I was promised that the burden would be light, the yoke would be easy, and yet... What if what's on my neck is not a stole, but a knee? A knee of subtle mistreatment or blatant aggression. As I am seen as a threat and I am profiled by those I meet in my community. Le genou du formalisme. Comme dans l'église ou au culte. My gifts are ignored or reframed. De mes collègues blancs. To then be accepted. A knee of isolation and oppression. As my academic work is scrutinized through a biased white lens. And I might not challenge anyone because they might cry. Les Noirs vivent et décrit cette honteuse réalité. Don't you know? that I am a person? When you see me, I want you to see my humanity. How I am made in God's image, just like you. Just like you. I have hope. God is good. But I am not good with a system of racism. I am not good. My allies are not good. We all are fed up. I am hopeful that I will be seen, that I will be heard, that I will be affirmed. I look forward to the day when we will dismantle the system of racism as participants in God's reconciling and transformative work. I look forward to the day of redemption. Where is God in all of this? Dieu est ici pour nous inspirer à changer. We are not alone. Nous ne sommes pas seuls. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.